Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to cover an interesting algebra word problem. And I know that is so exciting to many of you out there, like an algebra word problem. I love algebra word problems. So hopefully that is your attitude. Now, if you're like, I hate algebra word problems, they're so difficult. Well, I'll tell you right now, your attitude towards anything will make a difference. So even if you don't like algebra or math or word problems, try to have the best attitude possible because it does make a slight difference. Anytime you're negative about something, it just kind of creates these mental blocks. But anyways, I'm sure all of you out there are like excited to tackle this problem. So let's go ahead and read the problem. And of course, we'll solve it here in a second. But the problem is the following. A company's profit is given by this function here, p of x is equal to negative x squared plus 10x minus 9. And uh, this profit, okay, is in hundreds of dollars. Okay, that'll come up. That's going to be an important detail later on. But it's in uh, hundreds of dollars. So a company's profit is given by this function. p of x is equal to negative x squared plus 10x minus 9, where x, this variable x, is the number of widgets produced per day. Okay, so how many of these widgets must be uh, made to maximize the profit, okay? So we have some sort of profit model here. And of course, if you think about it, if we make too many widgets and we can't sell all these widgets, then we made too much, right? If we made, so we're gonna lose money because we made more than we could sell. But if we don't make enough, okay, we don't make enough uh, to fill all the sales that we could possibly have, we're going to lose money there. So there is an optimal amount of widgets to produce to maximize profits. Now, I'm going to actually solve this problem uh, using two methods. One, I'm going to use an algebra method, but then I'm going to throw in a little bonus, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to solve this problem using calculus. So that'll be a little bit of a bonus at the end of this problem. But uh, if you can figure this out, go to put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And of course, we'll uh, cover all this. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Kind of already explained the problem. So how many widgets must be produced? Well, the answer is five widgets, and that would produce a maximum profit of $1,600 per day. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this correct, that is outstanding. I'm gonna give you a nice little happy face, and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars you can tell your friends and family that you know exactly how to solve a what well what we're dealing with here is a quadratic function so you just solved a quadratic function word problem very impressive stuff uh, of course you know your family will be like well, next time i need math help i'm going to come to you maybe you can charge like five dollars an hour as a math tutor all right so let's go ahead and get into this now, I kind of have a little bit of a rule that I like to um, you know, stress when you're dealing with word problems in math. I call it the rule of three. It means that read the problem at least three times before you start doing any math, all right? So a lot of students just read the problem once and they start writing stuff down. Read the problem at least three times. Read it once just to get your sense of what's going on. The second time, start pulling in details. And then the third time, make sure you understand the question. And the question here is how many widgets must uh, must be made to maximize profits. And then this function here is modeling this company's profits. And X is the number of widgets are going to be uh, produced per day. So how can I approach this? Well, there's a couple different approaches uh, that you could take. But what you need to know is something about quadratic functions. Now, each quadratic equation, each quadratic function has a respective gra uh, graph with it, okay? And you want to be thinking about the graph of uh, this quadratic function, all right? So here uh, is the profit model or the profit function of this particular company. So what would the graph look like here? Well, the graph is going to be some sort of parabola, okay? Is it going to be this kind of parabola or this type of parabola? 
Well, the clue or the answer will come from this little negative sign right there. When you have a negative sign in front of x squared, okay, your graph is going to be negative. You have a sad parabola. This thing is sad to be a parabola, so it's going to have this kind of shape. If this was positive, it would be happy to be a parabola. It would be something like that. Okay, so we're dealing with uh, some sort of graph that looks like so. All right, so this is what this uh, looks like, okay, something along these lines here. And that would make sense because if this represents the company's profit, we're looking for the maximum profit. This would be what? Well, if this is the company's profit, where would be the maximum? Well, it doesn't really you know, make sense. Here is the minimum. We're not interested in the minimum profit. We're looking for the maximum profit. So, you know, this um, profit function, you know, makes sense in terms of uh, its respective graph. All right, so let's take a little bit closer look at this. So again, our profit is going to be in hundreds of dollars and X uh, is our input, right? We're gonna input the amount of widgets we make into this function and we'll uh, produce um, a certain level of profit in this, of course, will be in hundreds of dollars uh, for the respective amount of widgets we uh, make, okay? But let's take a better look at this right here so here I have the x-axis, here I have the y-axis. Now, what we need to uh, consider is the following. Like, all right, I know I have a um, parabola here that goes like this, right? Now, the question is the following. Do I need to solve this equation? And do I need to, like, you know, have a super, super accurate graph? No, the answer is no, okay? All we need to do is find this maximum point, all right? So it's not... Uh, necessary for you to solve this thing and have the perfect graph. Uh, of course, you just want to have some sort of general graph. The actual graph of this does look like this, okay? The solutions will be about here. Uh, it's probably like around one. I didn't do it, but I did graph this thing. But it's going to look like this, but it's not important. Even if you're like, okay, I know it goes something like that. What you're looking for is the vertex, all right? You're looking for this peak amount. Right, and that peak amount, if what you have to understand is this is the profit function, right? So x is the number of the x-axis represents the number of widgets you make, and then you're going to get an associated um, level of profit. Now this is the y-axis, but remember y is the same thing as f of x when you're talking about functions, and in this case y is the same thing as p of x, right? So x is our independent variable. We plug in, you know, a certain amount of widgets. And for each widget, there is an associated profit level, right? So we're looking for uh, this level, this many widgets right here. Okay, how many do we make to get the maximum profit? Well, this location here is the vertex, okay? This is the vertex of this parabola. So if we find the vertex of this quadratic function, we will be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how to find the vertex. So hopefully you're familiar with how to find the vertex of a quadratic function. Basically, when you have a um, quadratic um, equation, a quadratic function in this form, we call this standard form. Let me give you an example. What if I had like 4x squared plus 7x plus 9 is equal to 0? Well, a would be my 4, 7 would be my b, and 9 would be my c. So we're going to need to identify these a, b, and c coefficients in our quadratic equation. So the vertex is a very specific x, y point, okay, an x, y ordered pair. So how do we find the x, y ordered pair? Well, when our quadratic function or equation is in standard form, we can identify that specific vertex by this lovely formula right here. So the x coordinate will be minus b over 2a. Okay, again, the b and the a's, all this stuff come from this. Okay, and the y component is simply when we find whatever x is, we're going to plug that into the function. So that's what this notation means right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the vertex. Okay, so looking at this profit function, what is my a? Well, a is negative 1, b is 10, and c is negative 9. We don't need c here, but I'm throwing it in because if you wanted to, let's say, solve this using the quadratic uh, formula, you could. All we need, though, is a and b. 
So let's go ahead and find minus B over 2A. Okay, so that's the X coordinate of our vertex. So our vertex is some sort of X, Y point. We're going to find that, and that is minus B over 2A. So let's go to do that right now. Minus B is going to be what? Minus 10 over 2 times A. A is negative 1, so you can see that right there. So negative 10 over 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So negative 10 divided by negative 2 is a positive 5. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, even at this point, you would be done with the problem. Okay, so what does this mean, 5? Well, 5 is the number of widgets, right? So if you produce 5 on the x-axis, that is going to give you the maximum amount. So really, at this point, you are done. But let's just kind of take it a step further and uh, practice getting this y value here. It's just a good kind of... Um, you know, uh, exercise to practice finding the vertex. So how do we find this Y? Well, now that we have the X, all we're going to do is plug this, that um, answer into our function. Okay, so let's go to do that now. So here is our profit function. We'll plug in five and you can see uh, the respective work here. So five squared, uh, negative of that will be negative 25 plus uh, five times 10 is 50 minus nine. And that's going to be uh, 16. Now, remember, I said in the beginning of this prom that the profit is in hundreds of dollars. So if you produce five widgets, it will be 16 or $1,600. That would be the daily profit. Okay, so that is that. But now let's get to this uh, bonus here, right? So again, what did we find? Well, we found the vertex of this profit function where the x-axis is the number of widgets. That was five, right? And y-axis is the profit in hundreds of dollars, which is 16. So the vertex is 516. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and see how we can find this answer, which is five uh, widgets using calculus. So this is this little calculus bonus. Now, if you don't understand calculus, that's perfectly fine. I'll try to explain this very, very quickly. Um, but uh, I'm going to show you how cool calculus is. All right, so here is our profit function, okay? What I'm going to do, I'm thinking to myself, all right, I know it's a parabola. So here is my lovely parabola again. I still want to find the vertex. It's the same strategy, uh, but I'm going to use calculus because what I'm interested in is the slope, all right? So like the slope of a line, if the slope of a line is like this, what is the slope? Well, the slope is going to be some sort of positive value this way, right? If I have a line going this way, the slope is negative, okay? What is a line that's perfectly horizontal? Well, that happens to be zero. Now, what if we could just measure the slope along this profit function? So right here, it's positive, right? So you can see it's going in this upward direction, positive, positive, positive. Over here, it's what? Well, it, it's negative, 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 negative. But at this point right here, what is the slope? Okay, like it's going up. It's like a roller coaster, right? You're going up, 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 up. And then here for one split second, it is flat. Okay, the slope is zero. And that occurs just like on a roller coaster at the very, very peak before it starts going negative. So if I can determine where the slope of this uh, parabola is zero, okay, uh, the slope of this graph where it's zero, that would be the same point, okay, of the uh, this x value for the for our vertex, okay. So it's basically another way to find the maximum or vertex. So how do we do this using calculus? Well, I'm going to show you that right now. Super super easy. So what we're going to do is use this thing called the first derivative. Okay, and the first derivative basically takes your function like so, and it's a thing that we can do to effectively uh, come up with a formula uh, that represents the slope, that tells us the slope anywhere along this curve. I'm like, boy, I would love to have a formula that just tell me, just tells me the slope anywhere along this curve. Well, that is the first derivative. And it comes with this. There's a couple different ways you can write the notation, but we'll call it P prime. Okay, so we're going to find P prime, which is the first derivative, which is going to tell us um, it's basically the formula for the slope anywhere along this parabola. So watch how I um, do this. Okay, I'm not trying to teach you full on calculus. I'm going to just show you how easy it is. I'm going to take this two, 
See that little two up there? I'm gonna multiply by that negative. That's a negative one. So two times negative one is negative two. Okay, that's all I did. I took this two, multiplied by that negative right there. That's negative two. And then now, you see I have x squared. I'm gonna drop down my power by one. That's just a rule we have to follow in calculus. Very, very easy. So I had negative x squared. I took the two times that negative, negative two x, and I dropped the x squared down by one. So I'm, I'm left with x to the first, okay? All right, so now let's do the same thing here. I have x to the first, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did here. So one times 10 is 10, and then I'm gonna drop down this x uh, by, I'm reducing the exponent by one. It's always by one, so you have x to the zero, one minus one, uh, anything to zero power is one, so we're just left with 10, and then here, this is just going to be a zero. So this is our first derivative of that function. It just tells us this, it's a formula for the slope anywhere along this parabola. So I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna be like, all right, slope, this is the slope, right? When are you zero? Well, we can answer that by simply taking this and setting this equal to zero, okay? So we're gonna take the slope and ask, hey, when are you equal to zero? So we're gonna solve for x and we're gonna take that negative two x plus 10 and solve for x, you can see the basic algebra here. I wanna subtract 10 from both sides. I got negative two x is equal to negative 10. Divide both sides of the equation by two. I get x is equal to five, and you are done, okay? So when x is five right there, we have reached the slope of zero, which is the same thing as the maximum amount. This is what we call uh, optimization in calculus, it's a use of the first derivative. So effectively, you will do uh, problems like this in both algebra and calculus, okay? Now, uh, some of you might be saying, well, is this really used in real life? Absolutely, okay? So actual companies, you know, out there are, you know, have, you know, uh, mathematical uh, models for, you know, not only profit, their cost, their, you know, everything. You know, every, people, you know, companies, large companies especially, are always trying to use mathematical models so they can optimize, right? Try to save money, maximize profit. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. Now, if you need help with the algebra in this, I'm gonna uh, suggest checking out like my Algebra 1 course. But again, this is a very typical type of problem that you'll definitely see. And hopefully it motivates some of you out there to want to take calculus. That's an awesome uh, math course indeed. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.